morning, Lillian. Congratulations. Hey, good morning, Bree. Good morning, Chris. And good morning, Jason. And good morning, Guam. Good morning. Morning. All right. Yes, we are. Thank you. We heard that you guys received some awards. Yes, the hospital was nominated back in March at, for that Healthcare Asia Awards. And we received notice that, uh, you know, GMH got selected for those two awards, Hospital of the Year and the COVID uh, response initiatives that was submitted. So really it's just such a, it's such a great and very significant, very meaningful award, especially for what the staff have gone through last year with the COVID, uh, you know, crisis. So uh, we went into it really kind of blind. We did not have much of any uh, science or any data or any, you know, uh, kind of uh, guidance other than what CDC puts out on a daily basis that changes every day so you know we were going by that and plus whatever the you know the 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 situation is that uh, patients are presenting to the hospital with so you know we were armed with ppe but um, despite that you know of course there's always the anxiety the fear and the concern because you know this virus is very invisible and uh, we saw a lot of people getting infected and even though you know so it, it was quite quite a year, um, but you know, the staff rose to the challenge, you know, they came to work, uh, despite their anxieties, they came to work with their courage, with their strength and ready to take on and take care of these patients. And even to the point where they were, you know, standing in as proxies because mm -hmm. families weren't allowed to be with them at the bedside. So these uh, nurses and the nursing staff and everybody just really stepped up to to the challenge and they came to work ready to just you know take care of these patients so no, this is just really, really significant really just kudos to everybody over at gmh because it just kind of takes me back to when dr jolene uggen was on the show yeah. and she was explaining what a day like is for for people that work at gmh no matter you know if we have you know facility issues everybody just comes in gives 150 million percent and you know yeah. that's just this is just really good news yeah. so congratulations yeah. to you guys thank you thank you so much and lily what was it like to, to to win these awards uh when, when we have this this conversation on guam about about gmh maybe you know a lot of times not as good a conversation as, as we'd like to have but to get this validation from the international community just how huge is it for you and your staff it is, it is. It's huge. You know, it really, it really just validates the fact that, you know, we can, the community can trust us. The community can have confidence in us that, you know, we will take care of you and your loved one here in the hospital and, uh, you know, with great confidence. And so it's an assurance for, for the staff also in terms of the relationship with this leadership, uh, with this administration and the, the, the support that we've been getting from the governor's office and the lieutenant governor and all the other agencies working together, working collaboratively. And so, you know, again, it just gives us that seal of, uh, of assurance and confidence, especially for the community. So how are y'all gonna celebrate? <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna celebrate with some whiskey and some wine. I'm just kidding. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> right on. Uh, Lillian, on the management side, this uh, release that you guys sent out, uh, it says that Healthcare Asia noted that among GMH's significant achievements during the pandemic, the hospital implemented 40 protocols for the clinical and operational management of COVID-19, established state-of-the-art telehealth, telemedicine, and physical round or two programs to sustain life-saving, intensive, and critical patient care services, created a war room committee dedicated to the individual and clinical management of COVID-19 patients, created a daily briefing document and daily COVID huddles to ensure streamlined communication amongst all branches of the hospital and establish electronic daily wellness checks to mitigate the spread of COVID-19 amongst staff and keep up with crucial staffing uh, levels. Those are some of the key decisions that uh, you and your management team uh, made. So, of course, we know the staff gets so much of the credit as the, as the frontliners, but uh, anything you want to say about you and your management team? 
We have a great, really great and fantastic management team. I would not have done this by myself, but we've got the, you know, the clinical expertise of the two doctors, Dr. Ugger and Dr. Bardalio. We've got the nursing uh, executives. We've got our chief financial officer who makes sure that we stay online and within our within our operational, uh, you know, budget. We've got Mr. Kando, who is the associate administrator of operations. Don Rabinal, who is also uh, very key in terms of our electronic and our infrastructure for IT. And just, you know, a really great dynamic team. We've got Belle Rada. She's a nurse who oversees the professional support services, that arm. And so, you know, again, we just have such a great uh, and dynamic executive management team. We all, you know, we all have different perspectives and different ideas and we argue, we disagree, we, we hash out our differences respective, respectfully. And so that's why we have a really great working and very united exec executive management team. And the board of trustees also supports us in our decisions. Uh, I don't know, Thank, and congratulations again, Lillian. I don't know if uh, we need a new hospital now that we got an <laughs> award-winning old one. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but is there, is there any update you could give us on the new hospital? The building, the structure that we need oh, to see, have. Oh, it's still going. It, okay, so we're still getting a new hospital, everyone. Just checking because I thought we were good already. <laughs> no, but Lillian, any any update? Uh, you Because we had Maya on, uh, uh, last week, but any uh, new info on the new hospital? Well, it's really more so a, a campus, a medical campus. And so... You know, it's not just the hospital, there's also the public health and behavioral health. And so we are gonna meet again this week uh, because you know, the deadline, the target date to um, break ground is just next year in October. And so we really need to step up our uh, our momentum here and, and get moving with working, uh, you're finalizing the assessment and getting a, uh, you know, um, a contractor uh, to, to begin the a &E design. So. It's moving along quite rapid, quite quickly. This week we're going to meet. Mm -hmm. So again, what was the site that was selected, or have have you guys not selected the site yet? Well, we narrowed it down to two, which is the Atacal and the uh, Manila. We're not calling it Eagles Field anymore because Eagles Field is only one acre. So that area around uh, Manila, uh, which gives us 109 acres to build upon the campus of public health, GMA, of a, a hospital and a behavioral health and the CDC lab that has been already approved in terms of funding from DOI. So that's going to be, we're looking at that Manila as the central location. And so we're going in that direction. So it's, it's I'm sorry, so it's Manila or Atacal? Well, for me right now, it's Manila and, uh, and that's the preferred, that's the desired uh, site and so the land management uh, team are doing the survey, really deep dive survey, and I think they're also doing the Adakal area. So because you know Adakal is still closer to the northern part, mm -hmm. uh, and so we want to really keep it central, which is Manila. Yeah. Is there any any updates on the skilled nursing uh, facility? Okay, in terms of it being an alternate care facility or yeah, it being you know the renovations and, and everything with the FEMA money that you guys uh, received right. for the alternate care. That's facility. ongoing. Yeah, that's ongoing. The design uh, now for the B wing to be uh, retrofitted with the HVAC, uh, with the ventilation and isolating it so that way, if it does become uh, a COVID isolation or some kind of an infectious isolation facility we've got that structure in, uh, infrastructure ready so it's it's ongoing right now with the a and e all right yes all right that's it yeah so you don't have any tough any. questions for them because they won an award <laughs> <laughs> no i don't they're gonna go party now right on lillian remember 100 <laughs> gather, gathering limits 100 oh. work hard play hard <laughs> you should win an award for your hair lillian <laughs> Oh, you are so hung up on my hair. I dig <laughs> it. I'm just saying. We're all, all of our hair is nice now that we're winding out of COVID. Everyone got time to fix their hair. You know? <laughs> right on. Uh, Lillian, congrats right. to you and yeah, the staff. Congratulations. So That's awesome. awesome. Right on. Viva DMH. Viva DMH. There you Viva. go. Right on.
That's the Lillian. Okay. Viva Guam. Amen. <laughs> That's it. Lillian Posadas, hospital administrator. That is amazing. Yep. Good stuff. Good you stuff. know, because you're all, we're always used to hearing you know some of the bad things that happen right. at the hospital, the facility, mm. the repairs that need to be made, and so out of all that darkness that we all went through, and especially the problems that GMH had, you know. And That's what, such good news. Dr. Uh, Margaret mm -hmm. Hattori Uchimu was telling us, you know, because she's, she's the dean of, of the School of Health at UOG and they train all the nurses, as they said, you know, a lot of nurses don't want to be the richest person in the world. Sometimes just being recognized, you know, is, is all you need to keep you going. Mm -hmm. If somebody just says, hey, you've done a good job, you know, like one of your peers is just like, you know, you're doing it the right way. That's all it takes to, to get you to the next level. Yeah. That's fantastic. That is awesome. Uh, 727, good morning. We'll take a quick break, uh, and we're coming back with uh, Mayor Paul McDonald and Mayor Jesse Allig uh, right here on the link, which is brought to you by East West Rental, Calvo Enterprises, IT&E, and our friends at Jack in the Box. We're uh, Jack in the Box. We did those cheddar biscuits. I'm going to try and hook some up for us this week, too, Bree, because I know you were out. Um, we inhaled those cheddar biscuits. Yeah, they were good. They come with either, you can either get it with the uh, bacon, egg, and cheese, or sausage, uh, mm -hmm. egg, and cheese. Joe served, um, I had the bacon, the sausage, of course.